starting to feel it now, my back's aching a bit. Oh, you've done brilliant, mate, well done. The first time I came over there, I was very scared. Alice has wanted to run with you for a long time, buddy. Alice, Alice, Alice. Alice. Well done, Katie. I am very, very tired. First finish at UTB, top 20. You can't oh, argue what happened to that. It's three years since I first towed the start line at TDS. One DNF, one COVID cancellation and one tragedy later. I was beginning to wonder whether I would ever finish this race. Ben and Sarah are doing UTMB this week. How are you feeling about it? More excited than nervous, I think. Yeah. Because it's just a big unknown. So in fact, um, actually, Sarah, you're more experienced, aren't you, than Ben at this? Yeah. <laughs> but she'll be back in Chamonix before I will. Yeah. Good luck to you. Good luck. Monday morning began under the famous arch and a shakeout room with my friends Lloyd and Steve and my son Ellis. Along with Lloyd and uh, a few others, Steve's going to join me on the start line of the TDS tonight. How are you feeling for it? Yeah, I'm feeling quite good. Oh, we did the uh, vertical K yesterday. After finishing on the stunning Chamonix running track and coffee at Moody's Cafe, I went to collect my race number. This year there were random kit checks but I wasn't chosen, I simply showed my ID, picked up my race number and had the timing chip attached to my race pack. I was all set. Uh, we're in the queue for the buses, uh, it is 9.30ish at night, race starts at midnight, uh, we're in a big long line and uh, there are loads of buses so uh, we'll just get on the next one that's available to take us. The bus journey from Chamonix to Courmayeur takes roughly 40 minutes. Most of that time is spent travelling through the tunnel under Mont Blanc to reach the Italian side. It's always one of the most nerve-wracking parts of any pre-race. Okay, we've arrived in Courmayeur and I am sitting in a cafe and due to a language issue, I've ended up with two, two lattes rather than one. <laughs> there we are. And I'm eating some porridge. I'm trying to just get over my nerves at the start of this race. There's an hour, an hour and five minutes to go before the start of the race. I've got plenty of time, just need to relax, calm my nerves, and then walk slowly up to the start line when I'm ready. Most runners congregate at the bus station in central Cormier, where the bag drop cages are located. The start line is just a short walk away. So I'm just about to drop my bag off. This is for uh, Beaufort, which is at about 80 kilometers, just over 80 kilometers into the race. So we hand the bag in, check that it's tight and uh, secure, and then it'll go in those cages there to be taken to Beaufort and hopefully this year I will get there. Despite the midnight start, the town was alive with activity and the energy on the start line was palpable. Welcome to Film My Run, it is five to midnight, we are in Cormier. This is the third attempt at TDS. Can we get it done? Who knows? And yes, this is a washing up scouring pad on my forehead. High five with Catherine Paletti, one of the founders of UTMB, and I was on my way. The first few hundred metres were somewhat stop-start as hundreds of runners funnelled into the narrower streets of Courmayeur. We ran a couple of kilometres through the town before the crowds eventually thinned out and we hit the first climb. At night, it's always stunning to turn around and look back down the hill at the stream of head torches behind. So one hour, 20 odd minutes, and we're at the first aid station. So this is uh, called Chakru at six and a half kilometers in. 
and uh, it's an absolute melee to get anything here. We are two hours, 23 minutes into the TDS. You can see all the runners up ahead. We've got about 100 meters climb left to do to get to the first top of the first climb. Beautiful view behind us of all the lights coming up the hill. Okay, so we now have to go down to Lac Combal. Uh, we've done 12 kilometers actually, but that says we're at 11. And uh, Lac Combal closes at 3.30 a.m. Now 2.30 a.m. So we've not got long to get down there. Okay, this is Lac Combal. I had a bit of a worry coming down the hill because I thought we might have trouble making it on time. But we're here by about 3.05 a.m. This closes at 3.30 a.m. so in 25 minutes so not long away we've now got five hours to get down well up up the next climb and then down and along to Col Petit Saint Bernard um, which closes at 8.30 in the morning. Hopefully that's that's okay. This is the aid station here and loads of people all cramming in to try and get here before it closes. So I'd forgotten how sketchy that uh, climb just is there. I don't know if you can see all the lights still coming up the hill. We're at 20k, well 21k on my watch. And uh, these ladies here are scanning everybody's number as they come up. So we need to get our way 15 and a half kilometers down the hill to uh, Col de Petit Saint Bernard. It is now 4.30, so we've got four hours to do 15 kilometers, 10 of which is downhill, so we should be all right. The good thing about TDS is that it is at the start of the week, so you can spend the rest of the week wandering around the race village, watching everyone else running, and have fun with the family. The children have made me do this. I didn't want to come on it. I'm too frightened. It is pretty much obligatory to go on the rides at the Chamonix Amusement Park. And the luge has definitely been one of our favourites over the years. Chamonix is also small enough that you're almost guaranteed to bump into someone you know. David, you will know if you watch the Film My Trail Run channel. That's right, yes, I do Film My Run. <laughs> David does Film My Trail Run. Yeah, because Stephen doesn't go on any of the trails. I don't go on trails. <laughs> I don't like trails, they frighten me. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to David's channel, please do go and subscribe because he's got some great videos. Cape Wrath Ultra, which is one of my dream races, David has actually done, and you did quite well, didn't you? Podium, third place, delighted with that. Absolutely over the moon. Third place in Cape Wrath Ultra, amazing. What are you doing out here, David? Because you're not, you're not running, are you? I'm not running. My wife is supposed to be running the OCC on Thursday, uh, but unfortunately we were out here training about a month ago and she broke her foot. We had everything booked up, so I decided to come out and try and capture a little bit of the, uh, the Irish and Chamonix during UTMB week myself. Hey, David. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Great Thanks talking very much. Yeah. It is morning, it's about quarter past six and uh, we've come a completely different way to what I remember. I don't know how much elevation, probably about 2,000 metres elevation. It's funny how when you've done a route before it always seems to take longer the next time around because you completely forget about entire sections of the course. But we definitely did take a slightly different route on the way to Col de Petit Saint Bernard this time around. Um, I'm starting to feel it now, my back's aching a bit. Um, 20 miles in, just over 20 miles in. But, uh, you know, we'll get on. Uh, I've got lovely soup and, soup and noodles here, and bread and cheese and a little bit of chocolate. So that'll see me right till we get down to uh, the aid station at Borg Saint Moritz. With the sun rising fast, I knew we were in for a warm day and I wanted to start the next climb before it got too hot. So I tried to make good time down the relatively smooth, easy descent. It's not completely rock free. You do have to watch your footing, but uh, in general, it's not a bad descent, this. And we've got about 6K to go to the bottom. In ultra-distance races, big, long descents are your nemesis. 
Higher up, it will be steep and technical, but even lower down, once you reach the tarmac or the grassy slopes, you can't relax. If you don't keep your eyes glued to the floor or you go too fast, you may fall, get injured or destroy your quads for the rest of the race. As I approached Borg St Moritz, I did notice my watch registering a lot further mileage than the official measurements. I've got about 49 on my watch. Borg St Moritz closes at 11, so we're going to be there well in time. Hello. So we're not far off arriving in Borg St Moritz, but I've just realised you can see where we're going next. Right at the top of that hill up there is a fort, and uh, we have to get to there. Uh, I can't remember what time cutoff is, but anyway, at some point in the next few hours, I'll have to be up there. Just coming up to the aid station now, and it is 11 minutes past nine. So I'm not too far off the time I was last year. Good job, guys. Thank you. At 50 kilometers in, the checkpoint at Borg San Maurice is the first major rest stop. This is where you can get pasta or rice and meet your crew if you have one, before starting the longest ascent of the race. Okay, we are halfway up the climb out of Borg St Moritz, which is down there about 3K and we've got another 3K to go up. We've got the little fort is the main thing to get to. It's a good point to get to, makes you feel like you're getting there. And the time is uh, 10.24, so 10 hours 24 into the run. So made it to the top of the climb for De La Platte. This aid station closes at quarter to two, so we are well in time, but it was hot. And uh, this is the place where you can buy Orangina. You may remember from my last video when we got here at 3 a.m. But you do have to pay five euros, but it is well worth it when you get to the top of this climb, especially on a hot day like today. From Fort de la Platte, the climb continues up through some of the most stunning scenery on the TDS route. It's absolutely amazing up here. And it's such a beautiful day as well. Really, really hot. So struggling in the heat. But 12 hours done, 61 kilometers, nearly 62. So what a beautiful, amazing view again. first time I came over there I was very scared but that didn't seem at all bad this time so maybe I'm just getting used to these things uh, so this is the bit that everyone talks about when they uh, talk about TDS it's the uh, chained roped section to get down it's not too bad actually you know, it's um, as long as you hold onto the chains and you go slowly, it's absolutely fine. I am a bit screwed, so might be five minutes rest here. If you look up there, you'll see all the people coming down. Some coming down a bit quicker than others, but we made it down all right. It's a bit technical still, underfoot slippy, loose rock. Four kilometers to the next aid station. TDS is the third longest race of the UTMB week. 
the longest is PTL at around 300 kilometers, which you have to complete as part of a team of two or three. This year, it was won by these two, twins from Switzerland known as Alp Experience. But the big dance, the 170 kilometer UTMB begins on Friday. Start line of UTMB. It's always an incredible atmosphere as race time draws nearer. Two hours to go. Spectators line the streets hours in advance. I spotted filmmaker Billy Yang just a few feet away who had run the 53 kilometer OCC race the day before. How was yesterday? Oh my god, yesterday was incredibly beautiful but incredibly hard too. I heard somebody told me they, they passed you and you had your head in your hands at one, at one point. Was it really hot? Uh, that was probably on the climb to La Ligere. Yeah, 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 it yeah. was. Um, I was just plonking big time, like out of calories, out of, uh, just couldn't move forward. And so I just needed to take a second to regroup and reset. Yeah, and then uh, on the descent, I got a couple of crackers in me. And the guy who told me that he saw you with your head in your hands then said you flew past him yeah. at the hill. Yeah, and then I'm passing like nice few runners. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the downhill, so. What are you doing yeah. today? What are you doing this week? Uh, just following the men. Okay. The lead men, yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. Well done. Cheers, Billy. Yeah. Take care, bud. Nice to meet you. This is the UTMB 170 kilometer race starting right here in the centre of Chamonix, all the way around Mont Blanc and back again to Chamonix. I've cut the footage of the start of the race down, or we would have been here forever. There were well over 2,000 runners. We did manage to spot Sarah Place. Hi Sarah! And that is the start of UTMB, that's how you want it to be. How many runners was that? Unbelievable. I don't think that went on for a full seven minutes. Seven minutes of runners coming seven past. Minutes. That is incredible. The winner of CCC was Peter Engel, who completed the 100 km course in 9 hours 53 minutes. British runner Jonathan Alban came second after his superb win last year at the OCC race when he beat fellow Briton Robbie Simpson into second place. Back at TDS, we were past the most technical section of the race. It's easy running from here to Cormet de Roselin, a crew point where I found Liga waiting for my friends Lloyd and Steve. Ah, you all right? Yeah, you all right? How far are the boys? They're behind you. They're not, not far. In 2019, I made it to this checkpoint as darkness fell with just five minutes to spare. Okay, so Cormet de Roselin. And uh, we're at 66k officially, and uh, we've got a, a good two hours, 15 minutes before this closes. Two and a half hours, in fact, before it closes. And the next aid station is La Gitas, and that closes at 7.30. Eight kilometers from here, and this is our aid station. Honestly, you can't take your eyes off this race for one second. The scenery is stunning. We left Cormet de Roseland and made our way onwards to the next checkpoint at La Gitas. The rugged beauty topped by yet another technically demanding but utterly thrilling descent. Just filled up my water bottles from this river. Absolutely freezing cold and lovely. Beautiful descent down. We're on our way to La Gitas, which is two kilometers away. Go. So this is uh, Gitas, and um, we are well in time here. This closes at 7.30 tonight. Uh, the next aid station is the drop bag station. It's Beaufort. I've got soup. 
With the sun gradually fading, we left La Gitas and made our way slowly up the next climb. I remembered how exhausted I'd been when I reached this point in 2019. What a fantastic end to the day. So there is Mont Blanc. And there is Lloyd. What a beautiful place though. Oh, just gorgeous. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling a bit better. I was feeling a little bit pukey, but we're all right now. In 2019, this is where I stopped, DNF. Okay, yes, so, guess what? We, the both of us, were there in 2019. Okay, well, I was asleep. So now we meet again. I was and asleep. Today you're a finisher. I'm going to finish today. Yes, you're going to yeah. kill it, Stefan. Let's go, Adrien. Thanks. 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 I was tired, but what a lift it was to be cheered past that mental milestone in the race. So we are at the top of the final climb before the descent to Beaufort. So we've got a few bits of water here that you can fill up your bottles with. And uh, Lloyd and Steve Wyatt have just left. So I'm gonna follow them down. Hopefully we can get down in a couple of hours. Sun is setting. Wherever you're going, I'm going to. I'll follow you through the black and the blue. Whatever the mountain will climb to the next. Honey, I'm with you through life and to. Okay, so it's 11.30 at night. I got here about half an hour ago and I've basically just slept. I have cleaned my feet up a bit. I'm just gonna put clean socks on and um, change my top and then get out there and try and get this final 50K done. I'm so tired. And that descent into Beaufort was horrendous. But we got that done, so let's just get the final 50k done. I don't, I've no idea where anyone else is, um, but Lloyd and Steve Wyatt are, I think they're, they're out there now doing the final 50k. So we've started the climb out of Beaufort. Um, I am very, very tired. My feet are good, my legs don't feel too bad, but just my whole body is, because I've had no sleep for two nights, my whole body just feels really fatigued. I just want to lie down and go to sleep at every opportunity. Uh, but we're, we're on our way to the next aid station, which is literally about one and a half kilometers away. So we'll get there and, uh, and have something to drink. Okay, it's about uh, 1.47 in the morning. Uh, we are at Hotluce, which is 98 kilometres officially, although on my watch I've got 106 kilometres. Uh, so this aid station closes at 5.30 in the morning, so we're here before 2am. But we've got a long hike now, uh, a good 1300 metre climb, 15.5 kilometres to the next aid station called Jolie. We are about seven kilometers away from the next aid station. We're at a medical tent, Col de Verri, uh, and they've kindly provided some uh, drinks as well for us. It's not a, an official aid station. Um, I'm feeling sick. I've, got, I've just taken a tablet to just try and ease my stomach. My legs aren't feeling too bad, to be fair. 
um, but I just and I, I've been sleeping a lot as well been having five minute naps ten minute naps here and there so the time is gradually drifting into uh, 37 38 hours uh, but anyway we're getting on we're going back up a hill now and uh, hopefully we'll hit uh, the next aid station in the next couple of hours thank you guys I think it's okay. Uh, what, what, uh, just a shock. Gracias. You have lucky. Yeah, yeah, I think uh -huh. so. You guys go. Okay. I think so. I'll just rest a minute. Okay. Bone, yeah. bone. No, bone. no, it's good. It's good. No. I think it's good. It is. So we're at a little cafe uh, just halfway up the climb to La Flagère. So this is the route that all the uh, CCC runners are just coming down now at the end of their race. And in about three or four hours, the, uh, the winner of UTMB and all the other UTMB runners will be coming down this hill and through this cafe as well. This beautiful cafe is La Floria, about halfway up the climb from Chamonix to La Flagère on the opposite side of the valley to Mont Blanc. And here he is, Trail and Error Podcast Supremo, Jay Grady. Second film. How are you? How's it feeling? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah? Have you enjoyed yeah. it? Parts. You've enjoyed yeah, parts? Well, that's, no, but, but and 48 hours from now, you'll have enjoyed it all. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I won't have to get all the nasty bits. But yeah, it was good. It's good. I'm glad it's over. We made our way up to catch the lead runners on their final descent. On your toes, on your toes. We're on the top of uh, La Flagère and uh, Killian Journey is, he looks like he's going to win UTMB even under 20 hours maybe and he is just coming up the hill any second now so we're going to keep an eye out for him. There's loads of people here, it's an amazing atmosphere and he's going to hit the, the last aid station and then it's downhill 7k all the way into Chamonix. Well done, Killian. Good job. I was lucky enough to grab prime position on the other side of the La Flagère checkpoint for an unobstructed view of the undisputed goat of ultra running before his descent into Chamonix to claim his fourth win at UTMB. Killian first won UTMB way back in 2008 and here he is 14 years later not only winning but breaking the course record. Well that was mad wasn't it? Absolutely mad. Killian Journey in and out of the aid station, seven k to go to the bottom. Right we're just gonna see Tom Evans coming down the hill now. In third place he's gonna get a podium finish. Friend of the channel Tom Evans on his way to a first British podium at UTMB since Jez Bragg's win in 2010. Oh, you've done brilliant, mate. Well done. Thanks, Superb, mate. buddy. I'll see you at the end. Well done. Get that podium. That was Tom Evans going down the hill almost, unless he falls and breaks his leg, that is a podium finish, a British podium finish for Tom Evans. Fantastic. And this is my son Ellis, running with Jim Wormsley, who finished fourth this year. Great work, Jim. Ellis has wanted to run with you for a long time, buddy. Well done. Good effort. Good work. Get it done, mate. Get it done. Having had Courtney DeWalter win the UTMB for the last two years, Katie Scheid continued the USA's recent dominance of this event with her first win in Chamonix. 
And I was absolutely delighted to welcome Mark Derbyshire back to Chamonix. Mark is the course record holder for the Lakeland 100, the Arc of Attrition and the Centurion North Downs Way 100. Right, this is Mark Derbyshire. We are running into Chamonix Town Centre. And Mark is about to come in the top 20 at UTMB for the first time. How do you feel, Mark, after that? Knackered. Broken. Once a guy. Uh, I sort of enjoyed it. I enjoyed it up to 150k. And uh, the wheel fell off big time. Yeah. Your first finish at UTMB, top 20. No, I'm, Can't argue. I was pretty happy with that, yeah. yeah. It's just a shame the last 18k I lost. Lost a lot of time. Yeah, I lost a couple of places, didn't you? Lost a few. That's alright though. That's, honestly. Right, thank you Mark, well done buddy. Good job. It's 10 to 7 in the morning, head torches are now off. Um, amazing dam over there in the distance, I don't know if you can see that. Um, and I've had an accident. I fell and uh, cut my leg on a, in a, br on a bridge that didn't have uh, a slat in it. I missed the slat and went into the water and this leg hit uh, the uh, bridge. Uh, it's, uh, it's not too painful. I can move on it, so we should be okay. We are about uh, half a kilometre from um, Col de Jolie, which is the next aid station. Um, it seems to have taken forever to get to this aid station, but we better get a move on and get there now. Finally arrived at Col de Jolie, so that is 114 kilometers, so 30k to go, just under 20 miles left. Um, and the next aid station is Contamine, down at the bottom of the hill. And then we've got a big climb up, and then we've got the finish, the uh, descent to the finish. So let's get on our way. It had been a very tough night, what with sickness, extreme fatigue and the fall. I'd spent much of it with Lloyd and Steve. At one point we fell asleep on a dry ski slope for 20 minutes. We were all very glad to see daylight and reaching Le Contamine was another significant milestone. Not too far away from Contamine now, just had a big long downhill which uh, is really hurting my legs now <laughs> but uh, you know that's the nature of UTMB races the downhills hurt just as much if not more than the uphills hoping to get done by about 3 or 4 p.m. this afternoon but we'll see what happens We're at Le Contamine, uh, which is a pretty major uh, aid station checkpoint uh, on UTMB as well. Um, but uh, on UTMB it's fairly early in the race and uh, for us it's, well, pretty near the end now. We just have one big climb to do and it is a big one, it's about a thousand metres. Uh, but then it's all downhill to Les Uches and back into Chamonix. So, distance from Les Uches to Chamonix is 8k. Okay. Um, couldn't tell you what it is to Bellevue. So, here, uh, no impressive, we've done 80 miles. At least it's probably 81. Yes, yeah, maybe. Gotta start a big climb now, but it's the last one and we are on our way home. So there we are, we're at 123 kilometers. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, the next cutoff point is at Bellevue at half past five, so we're, we don't need to worry about cutoffs anymore. It's all fine. Uh, but the climb is 1,270 meters. 
that's what we need to worry about now. With legs as stiff as mine are, we need to uh, we need to just be aware that we've got a big fat climb coming up now. It's worth pointing out that the highest mountain in the UK is Ben Nevis at over 1,300 metres. We had travelled 80 miles and effectively already climbed Ben Nevis six times and we were about to do it again. But I could feel the finish line. I've been dreaming about completing this race for three years and we were so close now. Right, we are about to start the final climb of the day. This valley here is absolutely beautiful. And you can see, again, you can see the summit of uh, Mont Blanc there. Anyway, it's been nice having uh, the company of Lloyd and Steve, and uh, we've been speaking to an, an Irish guy called James as well on this last last descent. So it's taken a bit of the uh, the time and uh, made us not, not think too much about how much pain we're in. It's a killer climb, but we are about 100 metres from the top now. Steve making it look easy. There's the valley down below where we've just come from. I say just. So we've climbed the last major climb. We are now heading down. We have a, have a tiny little climb up to the Bellevue checkpoint. But other than that, it's down to Les Uch and then 8K back into Chamonix. What a beautiful view. Hi, buddy. Can't be better. Oh, no, uh, can't be better. Uh, and again, you can see the summit of Mont Blanc up there. My legs are, as you might expect, completely shot to pieces, but uh, we'll make it down. By now, I was moving very slowly indeed. Every downhill step was agony. But once again, the scenery kept me going as I clambered over more rocky terrain. This bridge over the powerful Bianassi Glacier water is fabulous. Nevertheless, it seemed to take forever to reach the Bellevue checkpoint. So this is Bellevue, this is the final checkpoint before we head down to Les Uches. Only four and a half K down the hill. As I hit the tarmac on the descent to Les Uches, I was confident I could erase the memory of the DNF in 2019 and of the Covid cancellation of 2020. But I knew I could not erase the memory of last year and the Czech runner who died then would run those final miles with me. We are not far off the bottom of the hill and as you can see by my running form, that's not going to be very quick but we can safely say we are going to make it to the end under the cutoff. So we will complete TDS. And I'm already going to call it that it's the second hardest race I've ever done. After Val Duran, of course, if you hadn't already guessed. Cheers, buddy. That well, last year as well, was brilliant. Thank you. Well done, it's there. We finally checked it up. Oh yeah, I've, we've got it now. I'm not coming back, that's for sure. That was hard, wasn't it? Bravo. So this is the final checkpoint. Les Uch. We've arrived. 8K to go to the finish. Through the timing mat. Thank you. Hi guys. So this is where you get everybody cheering you in as you run through Chamonix Town Centre. Thank you. And uh, it's good to be here in the daytime rather than finishing at night when there's no one around. These moments are spine tingling. You're exhausted, but after such an incredible journey, the crowd, the atmosphere, and the enormous sense of personal pride lifts you beyond euphoria. Watch it! And this is it. So here's the famous 
Let's finish the line. That's how you finish oh, TDS 2022. So cool guy! I had a brief chat to Owen before my wife and children arrived. Lloyd was there having finished a few minutes earlier and I'm so grateful to Jeff, Holly, Jay, Lee and Mike for taking the time to be there too. Because sharing the highs and lows of our journeys, sharing our love of trail running and the mountains is what makes UTMB week and the Chamonix experience so special. Everywhere you turn, there is a beautiful view and a like-minded soul to share it with. And we will all be back to do it again next year. And if you want to be part of this, if you want to experience this for yourself, do not hesitate. Come and join us next year.